Hello and welcome back to No Man's Sky, everybody. This is Alan Paul, and we're doing a sort of a quicker video about nanite farming. Things have changed since Worlds 1 has come out, and we wanted to go over, or I wanted to go over a couple different ways to get nanites. Now, nanites, of course, being a very important part of the game, as you can see, we've got credits, of course, to units and quicksilver, but nanites really, they, they take up a good portion of our uh, monetary uh, transactions within this game in order to get upgrades for our ships, uh, uh, that is to upgrade it to a new class, same thing with our multi-tools in order to get them upgraded to a higher class, and there's so many more things that nanites can be used for. So there are now, as far as I can tell, and I'm trying to think of other ways to be honest with you, I wrote them all down as much as I can remember, but there are four key ways to get nanites. The first and foremost way to get them that everybody knows about is those curiosity deposits. Those particular deposits, curious deposits as it's called here, uh, give you the element of runaway mold. Runaway mold can in turn be turned into um, nanites by running them through a refiner. It's a time consuming process, but it is the easiest and safest way to get nanites. Finding yourself a really decent deposit is kind of tough. This one, I used to have about 20 different uh, curiosities here. And since the world's updated, it has somehow been nerfed. I've only got a few left. So as we can see in my inventory, which is getting kind of full at the moment, in my exosuit, I don't believe I have anything in here in regards to that. Let me just check real quick. Looking for runaway mold, and I don't think my freighter is present, so I don't think it will take it into the freighter itself. Let me just double check. Yes, I do not have access to the freighter cargo containers. Let me just make sure there's no runaway mold in here. Nope, none. Good. All right, so. And they try to run away on you as you uh, as you take it in. But each, each of those... Uh, Curious deposits <clears throat> give you quite a bit of one-away mold. Let me just check my inventory one more time and make sure that it's going where it belongs. There it goes. Okay, good. Let me gather up the rest. At low end, it, you won't be able to pick up these curiosities as quick. All right. I'm picking up some plants along the way. <laughs> All my plants are getting in the way here. There we go. And one more. I can get them all. There we go. Looks like that's it. If you look around in your upper uh, radar, you'll see if there's any triples, triple stars around. That means you didn't get them all. So how many do we get all total? Let's take a look. 7,817. I used to get at almost two stacks of this, which is 99.99 each. So if we take them and put them into our refiner, a full stack of runaway mold will usually take about 20 minutes to refine. This one takes about 15 and will yield me 1,563 nanites with a couple left over. So that's not bad. That's not bad. I can get that chugging along. So that is number one. That is the first way in which you can get your nanites. All right. So we're going to transition to the second way to get them. And the second way is going to be in a special special station. All right, see you all in a moment. Back, and as you can see, we're in a space station. In this case, we're in a pirate space station. Pirate space stations have some very interesting items uh, that you can do here. Obviously, you've got some quests that you can go on uh, via the bounty masters that are here, and you jump right in. They give you some very interesting stuff, and occasionally they will give you some nanites as well. Uh, through some of the missions you can do, not a whole lot, and sometimes it takes a while to get through these. But these missions are very handy. You can do these missions in order to get quite a bit of uh, uh, goods that you don't normally get. The blood salt, not so much. Counterfeit circuits are pretty cool. Very expensive, can make you a lot of money. Reladdiced re arc crystals, great for trading. The larval cores bring up another way of doing things. So we can get it this way, but there are other ways to get larval cores, and we'll go into that in just a minute. So this is the second way that you can get them, through the uh, uh, bounty masters, of course. You can also check out the agents over here, the black market agents, and you can check out some of the things that they have. The, the things that they have in here are suspicious packets, which are goods. They've also got arms, and then finally, tech. 
what we're going to do is we're going to pick up as much as we can. There's not many that they have in their inventory as far as the tech is concerned. So let's go ahead and grab that. And while we're here, we're going to grab these larval cores, and I'm going to show you something to do with those as well. Okay, great. And then finally, let me see, we got viscous fluids, and I'm going to grab that, and residual goop. Normally you can get these even on the planets that you're uh, running around on, so early game when you're running around and you're finding broken machinery and things like this that have something that you have to remove, sometimes you're going to find the viscous fluids and the residual goop. Go ahead and grab it early game because you're going to need that. Hadal cores also, I think, run into that. I'm going to grab those too. I've got, you know, obviously tons of credits that I can buy this stuff with. Um, and we're going to go ahead and grab the goods too just so I can show you what that's about. All right. So we got a, as much as we can get out of this uh, goods guy. Now, over time, he'll replenish those supplies. So you could stay in the same space station or you can find a network of them that you can go into. So remember how this is still going? Yep. See, it's still creating the nanite clusters. Okay. I'm going to stop that for just a moment. So runaway mold is our key, right? That's what we got from those other things. So I'm going to go back into my inventory here, and I'm going to grab, when I find them, let's go to the Hadal cores, which will give you nanite clusters as well. Hadal cores can be gotten in several ways, and I'm going to show you where you can find those in just a moment. Okay, let's go on to... There we go. So we're going to go residual goop first, and as you can see, it turns into viscous fluids. doesn't take long, so I'm going to go ahead and get that started. And here we are coming to the end of this process, and the viscous fluids are now complete. I'm going to go ahead and re, uh, recharge this. Now, viscous fluids, right? We're going to put them in here. And I'm going to hit add more. So I'm going to take the rest that I have picked up and put it in here. As you can see, it's about a three minute process. But let me show you just real quick. I'm just going to get a few of these. See, these turn into living slime, right? Nothing special there. Uh, that's just a get another process of getting stuff. So let me get about 20 of that. I don't want to go through the whole process because it'll obviously take a few minutes. And now if we put the living slime back in here, you'll see it turns into also runaway mold. This is a little bit of a... Uh, decent process as well. It takes about 10-12 seconds just to get these done. It is a long process to convert them all into nanites, but in the end, again, early game, it's always a good way to get yourself some nanites. So now I have the runaway mold, and just that small amount will turn into four nanites. It's not much, but it's a start. It gets you where you need to go. All right, so that's how you start with those. So we'll get on to the larval cores real quick just to show you what those look like. Um... Where'd they go? There we are. So larval cores, when you put them in here in groups of 10, yield you 500 nanite clusters. And we're going to show you where to find those as well. Uh, so we'll get to that in just a minute. Now our last thing that we were showing you, or the main purpose that we came to this particular uh, pirate station, is because of these units right here. So I'm going to move some stuff around just so I can put everything where it needs to be. So first thing first, I'm going to open up the goods. Goods will get you certain items. Three, four, five. It just gives you things. Things that can be worth some money. A hex core. It gave me superconducting fiber. It gave me this geode, which I can turn back into ferrite. It gave me a couple other items, and we exited. It'll tell us that we got a couple of repair kits out of it, too. That's very handy to have. Those things by themselves can't be turned into much else. So, ignore the goods. Try to go, if you could, for the tech and the arms. Arms will give you upgrades. As you can see, I just got an infra knife module. I got a photon cannon. Got over here, we got the uh, scatter blaster module. Another scatter blaster module, and it looks like a plasma launcher upgrade. And then finally, it looks like one more scatter blaster. Let's get some more of these. And these give us upgrades to where the, either our suit or our multi tool. So we've got a life support module and suspicious cannon, a scanner module. If you're not going to use these, the best part is look at how much value they have. 384, 336, 336. This whole stack is 1,152 nanites and 336 nanites. Yes, it costs you credits to do so, but it gives you the idea that you can actually purchase these things and then you can take it over here to the to your uh, salvage dealer and now you can sell those items in here like the infra knife modules. See, I'm going to sell them for 776. Uh, I'm going to get rid of my pulse engine modules, the photon cannon modules, and we're getting thousands of nanites by doing it this way. 
And if you can set up between three different pirate systems that you can go to, then you can literally uh, give yourself a really good boost towards um, getting a whole ton of nanites really fast. Again, it costs you a lot of credits, but if you can get everything that's in there, you can get some really decent nanites out of this. All right, so that is a second way to do it. A third way you can do this, and I don't see anybody here right now, a third way you can do it is by actually purchasing a ship. So if you have the credits to do so, by uh, gaining those credits, anytime you scrap out a ship, you will get upgrades from said ship. I usually don't recommend getting a C-class ship or even a B-class ship. Try to stick to at least A-class or higher. Yes, they're more expensive, but doing it the right way, that is just purchasing the normal way, is perfectly fine. If you don't want to have to spend that much, you can also go into your settings, into the difficulty, and you can set your... Uh, crafting and everything settings over here purchases you can make everything free make everything abundant and free so it doesn't cost you anything to purchase these things but if you ask me that's kind of cheating now you'll notice I'm in custom mode it's because I made a couple changes in here one of them I did is I did my fishing which is still in uh, standard for some reason it should be on auto catch uh, I changed it to auto catch earlier and I like to leave it there and I also did some uh, changes in here in order to uh, show different ways of taking care of things. So obviously it's going to stay on custom from this day forward. So that's the way that works. So that's another way that you can get certain things without having to spend the nanites on them. Okay, so we're going to go into the next way of doing things, and that is with Hadal cores and with... Um, I know the name of these things. There you go, the larval cores. So Hadal core and larval cores. Where can we find those? Let me show you next. Be right back. And we're back. Now, as you can see, I'm on a uh, planet that has water on it. This happens to be my personal planet, uh, my uh, community planet, if you will. And I am on a planet that has plenty of water in it. Now, this is in regards to the Hadal cores. Hadal cores can be gotten in two ways. Uh, three or four, actually, when I think about it. You can trade for them. You can find them in terminals, as you saw me do earlier. But if you want to gather them on your own, what you're looking for in the water here is these alluring specimens. These particular plants can give you Hadal cores. Now, probably, unfortunately, I should say, in order to get those, you have to dive deep under the water. I suggest having yourself a um, weapon of some sort ready to go. Because these things release an abyssal horror. So as you can see, these little uh, things right here, Hadal cores, they will give you that. Okay, so I'm going to grab a couple of these. Two. Now, if you're fortunate, you can get all five, but normally it happens on the first one. But it releases this guy, and he attacks you. So, and once that's done, there are no more Hadal cores left on the plant. So that's done. Recharge this real quick. All right. There's a second way to get them, and that is looking for submerged relics. This is much easier to get. You only get one, but by taking, by, by getting one out of the water just like this, you can get yourself another Hadal core. Let me show you that real quick. And they're not usually submerged, submerged, they're just under the water. See? Pick them up, you get yourself another Hadal core. Okay. So back up to our ship. I'll see if I can get a little boost to my ship by jumping on this rock if it's high enough. As you can see, I have another luring specimen right here. I'll go ahead and grab it anyway, so. Hmm. There we go. And there we go. Alright, up we go. Oh, apparently not close enough to the surface. Okay, so we'll head straight to the ship this way. Okay, back to our ship. Now before we leave, we're going to show you in our exosuit as we were starting to show you before, the Hadal cores. So let me show you that real fast. Hadal cores, rather easy to get if you just want to go for the submerged relics. That's perfectly fine. Ten of them will yield 500 nanites. And as you can see, really, really fast. You get 500 nanites for those. Very, very good. Now, keep in mind that by doing the Hadal cores, which I should have some more in here. There, there they aren't. There we go. As you can see, these things are worth quite a bit, though. So early game, it's up to you whether you want to trade out the units at 92,000 units each, or getting 50 Hadal cores per, uh, pardon me, 50 nanites per Hadal core. So that's up to you. 
that's up to you which way you want to go with that. So that's a second way of doing it. Let's go on to the, uh, uh, or as far as the Hadal cores are concerned. So far we've covered um, Curious Deposit. We've covered buy and selling items in the tra tra uh, pirate stations and getting the upgrades and turning those into nanites. Also a very good way of getting of getting nanites. Uh, we've now covered Hadal cores. Next one is Larval cores. Where can we find those? Well, let me show you. Be right back. And we're back. And as you can see, I'm landing in, near a building. And you'll notice that this building is a little different than the rest. First of all, there's no landing pad, right? So we're going to be using our own launch field to get out of here. But you'll also notice that there's smoke rising from the structure. The doors seem to be broken up a little bit. Yeah, this is a kind of a bad place to be. But you'll notice it has something here. Something called Whispering Eggs. In this place, we've got uh, Whispering Eggs all the way around this building. And these Whispering Eggs, once you... Uh, Retrieve what's in them with your mining beam, uh, which we're going to switch over to right now. Hold on, look, just past it. There we go. And it looks like I'm running a little low on the charge on that one. Finally, so let me get everything recharged because everything wants to be recharged. There we go. Okay, good. All right. Now, there's a good cropping of these around here, as you can see. We've got a lot of them around this building. The problem is, and what a lot of people freak out about, is that it releases uh, the horrors that are, that are in the ground. It'll remind you a little bit of Starship Troopers, let me be clear. The point is, is that you can avoid these guys pretty easily. You don't have to stand still. A lot of people will dig holes underneath them and stand in the hole and retrieve them that way. You don't have to go crazy to do this. Just keep moving. That's all you have to do. If they do hit you, jump someplace else or hit your jetpack for just a couple seconds and move somewhere else on the other side of the building and start to pick up the eggs there. You may not always get every egg, so my recommendation is, is once you do this to the egg and it, it appears as a uh, the whispering egg turns into the uh, larval core, pick up the larval core immediately, one at a time. Occasionally, it will glitch out and will drop through the floor and you won't be able to retrieve it after that. But if you hit the egg immediately and the larval core appears as you start to retrieve it, even if it's dropping, you'll get the egg anyway. Let me demonstrate, and we'll demonstrate running around the whole unit right now. Okay, so here we go. Pick it up. I can usually get two before they start really noticing me. Grab one from here, grab one from here. Two at a time is usually a good one to go with. I'll grab one from there. They will spit at you, and they will jump at you. There we go. Move to the other side. And just keep going around the structure. Stop for a moment, recharge. See, that one dropped, that one dropped through. And I was able to pick it up immediately. Oop, I'm stuck. See, he shot at me. He, he spits at you sometimes. There we go. If I can get one to actually fall through for once. Oh, okay, moving over here. That one stayed above. That one stayed above. Okay. Just keep moving around until you gather them all. That one is now empty. See, I literally ran right past them. Okay. Just keep moving. And as you can see, I'm literally not really taking much damage. And occasionally they will jump at you like that one just did and he hit me. Okay. And that one dropped through. That one actually dropped through the ground, but we were able to retrieve it. See? There's one. And I think this one's clear. It is. And I'm barely running at times, so just to keep clear. Alright, that one's now clear. This one's clear. Looks like this one's got one left. We'll grab it. We'll grab that one. Whoop, that one hit me. I'll grab the third one. See? All right, we grabbed these. They're all clear, I think. I think we got them all, right? Yep, we got all those. See, they're attacking me. No big deal. Not taking a whole lot, lot of damage. I think we got everything. And if you're wondering how many eggs you might have left, go up to the top of the structure real quick. Now you're out of reach of them. And take a look around with your visor. And if eggs are present, you'll see them through your visor. And I don't have any more eggs present, so I've got them all. Now, I don't know where these eggs went in my inventory. They should have went into my exosuit. But there's a chance that they went elsewhere. Looks like I got them all. So we got a ton of these eggs. We probably got over 20 of them, I'm guessing. I had some more in my inventory. But I'm going to do the same thing here I did on the others. Let's go in here. And we're going to put these eggs into our refiner. And they give you the same output that the Hadal cores do. 
as you can see you can get 500 you can't if you've got one of these dual refiners you cannot put them in as a double stack it won't do anything for you and there's nothing else you can add in here to double the output you just go ahead and hit it you get 500 more nanites out of them, and you're done again I want to reiterate though just like Hadel cores these are valuable so these 10 are worth six almost 700,000 units Hadel cores are actually more valuable at coming in close to a whole stack and will be clo coming close to a million units so again I leave it up to you as far as to what you wish to do your starter planet that you start on rarely has water on it I don't think I've had it happen to me more than one time and I think it was during an expedition so that is how you get larval cores okay and larval, co larval cores again and after a little bit the swarm subsides and you don't have to worry about them anymore and you can head back to your ship casually while you're here don't forget to stop inside the abandoned structure there's always goodies inside. Watch out for plants from the ceiling that might slap at you. You can get research specimens, which will increase your standing with a particular group, usually by one or two. Um, you've got boxes all over the place that you can pick up goodies in. Um, what you're looking for is you're looking for this terminal, this deserted terminal, which, guess what, will give you residual goop if you wish to collect it. I'm just going to collect it for now. I don't really need it. And then once you go through the whole um, rhetoric that's in here, it talks about, you know, the people went missing, garbled messages and stuff like that. Um, it will be all gone, and then you will get something to help you. Analyze the data log. Left for your journey. If you look at the top right, you see, you get some more nanites out of it. Usually in the area between about 70 or 80 to a couple hundred. So that's what you get out of that and don't forget to check the rest of the structure if it's got an opening that goes down a hallway or something like that by all means check out the other end of the structure but in this case yeah there's nothing more to check out here it's kind of a smaller structure here so it looks like we have one hallway I didn't check that one hold on yeah there we go I knew there was a hallway in here see and again check the ceiling make sure there's no bugs no uh, whippersnappers hanging down that might slap you. Again, you can pick up stuff in the items there. Sometimes they have these credit terminals that you can pick up credits in. Um, you can learn a word of the uh, local uh, population, in this case the Corvax in my case. And there's sometimes other things here too. If you take a look around, a lot of times you'll also find some buried technology or some broken machinery. I don't seem to have any here, so we'll just move on. All right, so that covers another way of getting nanites. Let's head back to our ship, and we're going to go, and don't forget, you've got these uh, posts here that you can get some. Uh, uh, these will give you uh, navigation data and 10 more nanites. Again, great for early game. Always check all of these boxes so you can pick up stuff along the way. See, I got 10 nanites from the post over here, and I just got a life support gel from there like I need more. Anyway, all right, so we're going to take off into this one more time again there are many different ways to get nanites I'm gonna show you the last two ways to get nanites now that I prefer at this point point. and again uh, keep in mind like I said many people have many different ways to get nanites there'll be other suggestions so check the comment section for other people who uh, will let you know of other ways that you can get them besides these couple of ways and what their favorites are some people don't like the combat some people prefer to have uh, other ways to get them uh, that are more peaceful, it is perfectly fine to do so. So as we head back to our base over here, I normally I'd pause and just do a transition, but since we're talking about it, uh, I'm going to show you the latest way of getting nanites, which is through fishing. You know, right? Weird. You can get nanites from fishing? Yes, yes you can. So go to your fishing, wherever you might fish at, go to any planet that you wish to go to, uh, that has water on it, obviously, that you can do fishing at. Cast your line in. You don't even need any bait. Just pick up as many of the uh, fish as you can. In my case, I'm not going to fish just yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my traps. You all should be able to get your automated traps at any point in time through the anomaly. And it looks like a couple of these might be full. Yeah, this guy's uh, pretty much just about full at this point. So I'm going to grab some of the... Uh, some of the fish out of that one. I'm just going to check this one here because it's closed unlike the other two and I'm curious about that. Oh, look at that. I got a colossal moss back. Nice. And we'll grab the B-class ones as well. I don't think any of these will have an S-class legendary in them, but we'll check anyway. Yep, just another A-class. All right, very good. All right. Now you can sell these fish. I'm going to jump over here real quick. All right. So you can sell these fish. Obviously, if you go into my inventory here, 
Um, here they've taken up residency, 50,000 units for this one. You get a 45,000 for all nine of these. So yeah, you can make some good money on these as well. But here's something you can do. You have to be in the water to do this. Go into your inventory. I'm going to release, as you can say, release fish. I'm going to hit E, and it releases a fish. But look at the top right. I just got 27 nanites for releasing, releasing a C-class fish. 43. 65. See, it'll keep climbing up. If I go with a B-class one, look at that, 54 nanites. It does vary a little bit. It will vary a little bit, but that's how you can get more nanites. And if, you, if you're daring enough to get rid of your A-class fish, over 100 nanites for those. Now, legendaries. Whoa, those legendary fish will give you a lot. But that's up to you if you want to let them go because they're also worth a lot of credits. So, and it's you don't have to use traps like I said. You can just go ahead and use your angler's rig and just simply go fishing. If you wish to put in bait, you can do so through your menu system here. I always try to assign this to a hotkey. So I can do it on my own and I can put bait in here. And you can use any of the... Um, uh, fishing baits that are provided that you can create or you can get yourself um, something else you know you can use fish to bait to fish with uh, barbie fish as bait as well and if you use the bionic lure uh, the bionic lure tends to be one of the most uh, most powerful lures that you can put on your uh, on your uh, fishing rig here as you can see one just dropped out which means I'm going to be catching something and I got an A class see and if I can get a Legendary, which I doubt I'll get on this particular run, Legendaries can sell for quite a bit more. Um, I don't know if I've got any in my inventory. I'll check in a moment here, and I don't mind letting my Legendaries go, but we can see how many Nanites you get from one of those in just a moment. Okay, another B-Class. All right, so we're going to hold off on that. Let me check my inventory real quick and just see if I happen to have any s class fish in here. i got to keep my eyes open because it'll be hard to see. Yeah, but I don't see any there. I don't think there's any in my starship. Pretty sure there's none in there. Not going to be in the multi-tool, obviously. The freighter, maybe? You know where I can find them in my freighter? Hold on. I might have put them in a storage area. See, I got the angler, and you don't want to throw him back. Okay, that's part of your quest lines. I'm going to hang on to him, and it looks like I don't have any S-Class in my inventory. S-Class will get you, obviously, a substantial more uh, amount of nanites at this point. They're easier to catch, or you have a better chance of catching them in deeper waters. Uh, this water over here is very, very shallow, so usually you will not catch any S-Class ship this close to shore. Um, actually, I really thought I built this place a little higher up off the water, but... Um, obviously not. Last last cast, another A-class. Deep Water Angler. And again, just to show you the differences that you'll get from these, I'll go ahead and throw him back. And how many nanites? Got 100? 114 for that guy. And finally, 226. So I got about the same. And last one, 115. So that's a pretty decent way of getting some nanites if you just like to chill and fish. This is an excellent way to get yourself some nanites and to just simply relax and have some fun in No Man's Sky. All right, we got one more way I'm going to show you how to do it, and I'm sure some of you who know me know exactly what I'm about to do. We are going to take a little trip through the portal to a wonderful little place. I got to find it first. Hold on a second here. And we're back. Okay, found the base I've been looking for. Of course, I really need to take a picture of this place. The planet changed with World's One Update, and it became a very pretty-looking planet, but it still has a lot of, uh, as you can see, boiling superstorms. And the Sentinels are malicious. So this is an extreme Sentinel planet that we're on here. I've got a nice little just mini setup over here. Nothing special. Place to house my... Uh, my portal and some place to land my ship but now it has floating flowers in the air so it's been a pretty cool looking planet uh, to say the least the temperature usually is around 77 so it's actually kind of nice and everything like that but again we're going to be doing a sentinel battle here so i have a different setup here this place right here if you look beyond it is going to look familiar to you 
See that platform up there? This is an ancient ruin. Ancient ruins, by definition, are immune to weather on planets until you go up a little bit higher from it. But within a certain radius, it keeps it perfect timing. It keeps it temperate. So I'm going to go all the way out to the edge here and watch the temperature at the bottom left-hand corner. So your aggressive sentinel planets are usually um, not immune to... They have bad weather most of the time. Nice pretty rainbow out there. That is gorgeous now, isn't it? But look at the temperature at the bottom left. It's now increasing, and you'll notice I'm an extreme storm now. But if you get close to this ancient settlement, watch it. I am now protected. So even though the temperature is going up, I'm protected from the storm. Okay, so what am I showing you here? You'll notice that I don't see any sentinels around, right? Um, and that's the whole purpose why we're here, is because sentinels provide you with a couple different things. Sentinels provide you with nanites upon destroying them. They also provide you with, uh, where is it here? Hold on, hold on, I can see that. I know I'm looking right at it, probably. Uh, not at the moment. Down here, Pugnium. They give you Pugnium. Pugnium is worth something, too. If you go in here, you can take the Pugnium by itself if you wish to do so. And let me grab it real quick. I'm going to grab like half of it just so I have it. You can turn it into nanites. But you notice it's a 25 to 1 ratio. It kind of sucks, if you ask me. But Pugnium is used in other means in order to create and build stuff. So hang on to it. It's good to have. You don't have to keep it in such large quantities like I have in my inventory. Um, they will also give you some ammunition as you fight them, which can sometimes oh, outbalance uh, what, what you've got going on. Now, another thing that they give you is, well, we're going to show you. We're going to show you the upgrades that it will give you. So I've got my bolt caster on right now. And one thing I want to look for when I'm out on this planet is you want to look for these double star things. These double stars are gravitino balls. Well, you know what? They really don't like you touching the gravitino balls. So I'm going to go up here and grab this one. I actually don't want to grab that one. I'm going to grab one a little further away. Let's grab that one right over there. I think that one's pretty close. 168. They're all nearby. Okay. So even though we're in the middle of a storm... And by the way, because it's a hot storm, your jetpack is better fueled that way. Even though we're in the middle of a storm, we're going to pick up this tiny little gravitino ball. And guess what? We have some guys showing up. Now, the key to taking out the Sentinels, normally in any other battle that you have, is to take out any healers first, like this guy over here. And he just gives you Pugnium. As you can see, I didn't get anything else. And I'm going to take out the call-out unit, because the call-in unit, the uh, that guy, will call in more units for you. So we're going to take them out, and they mostly just give you pug meal, okay? Where'd you go? I think I took them out. Okay, now we're going to take out these guys, because they're annoying me. Oop. Oh, we had another call-in unit over there. Okay, there we go. There we go. And you'll see we'll get, what? Not carbon. We get more Pugnium. We get Nanites from that. So the kills themselves will give us Nanites. Let's take out these rest of these guys, because I, I want to be able to get to the next level. Oh, he's behind the plant. He was shielded from, by a plant. Okay. You heard that little chime at there, and like that. That means that we're done with that level. Well, let's head back to our base. And the and you'll see now we're protected from the storm, and it kind of clears up a little bit. The sentinels will always appear in the direction you're facing for the most part. You'll see that they now are coming into here. Now, what you want to look for, if you look at the top right, I'm at level 4 right now, correct? We want to get to level 5. And I created this in such a way that I could get behind a wall. See? Look at that. So now he can't hit me. Haha. Ha. But for some reason, they can't see me either. And let's look. Nanites received eight. Projectile. And every time you pick up those barrels, they're very important as well, you will get some more nanites out. Alright. 
Every one of these will give you a certain amount of nanites for the most part. Whoop, let's get out of the way. Got pugnium from him. I got nanites from him of nine. So you're gathering nanites as you go as well as getting pugnium and things like that. See? More nanites from every one of those. Okay. Okay, we'll take him out. All right. There should be a barrel down there. There we go. Combat supplies. Grab the combat supplies because they give you the nanites you're looking for. Now, those combat supplies are very important. So as we wait for level 5 to come in, and this is important, and this is the reason why I wanted to show you, in order to keep this battle going, what you're going to end up with is the thing that we keep telling you to take out is the um, call-in units. Don't take out the call-in units. Simply take out everything else. But take out, if you can... Everything but the calling units. Let me just show you that real quick. So we have a calling unit there, right? So you'll notice that a second calling unit should appear. Let me just check real quick. Okay. I know, he can't come through the wall. That is done purposely. Just keep that in mind, folks. Okay. And you see they keep calling in more units. The key point is this. If you look, now we have a second call-in unit. So we'll have a constant run of units that are being that are being called in. See? More of the big guys. These are the guys you want to keep coming in for you. And yes, you'll take some damage, and when you get damaged too much, just go somewhere else. But the barrels are most important. Okay? Barrels are most important, and you can keep this going perpetually. What I like to do, because I'm getting into the weather area over here, is I like to draw them in. Okay, so I'm going to go over here. Try to have yourself a nice save point, too, in case you need to. Aha, can't hit me. And you see the two-legged walker can't come in. Occasionally they do. It's not a big deal if they do. But you notice that I'm drawing them all in. Look at that. And why do I have flooring down? Because you notice that sometimes they shoot the, uh, the grenades at you, if you will, and it causes holes in the terrain. And those holes will basically cause you problems, because you're not going to be able to navigate very well. There are tons of holes underneath this terrain, I guarantee you. You notice he's inside the wall now? Look at that. More, and more, and more. Now, if anyone's ever seen my Nanite videos in regards to fighting these guys, you'll know that I can get somewhere in the neighborhood on a really good day. On a bad day, probably about 75,000 Nanites an hour. On a good day, I can get about 100 to 120. I think I need to switch to... Uh, I don't have that. He's trapped in the wall. I'm going to see if I can get him from a different angle. Oop, got him. Ha -ha. Try not to hit your calling units with two of them. If you get lucky enough to have three, that's even better, but it becomes absolute mayhem at that point. So we're going to end this one now. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take him out. You don't have to take out the legs, but he does pause a little bit better. take them out good old-fashioned style that way now don't forget to grab the brains from these guys if uh, it stayed up there did it come down did I take it out myself oh there it is yep one time that way and the second time take it that way you'll get two brains out of it now if you're done with your battle and you really want to come to an end you can see this place is turning into an absolute madhouse take out your call-in units first then the healers take out your guns. Now with upgraded weapons you can really get things done quickly. And I think that's it. There we go. Sentinels disabled. In order to re-enable the Sentinels you can come back to the area and just uh, leave the area and come back. Let me pick up all these combat units, combat supplies real quick. This gives you something called salvaged glass. 
If you're not sure if there's any more missing or around here, there should be one right there. There it is. And a couple behind the wall. And we'll take a look around. I think that is it. Look around for anything that looks like a gear, like that. There's combat supplies I haven't picked up yet. That's not. That's damage machinery, as you can see. And I think I got all the rest. Okay, we're good. So let's grab the one piece of damage machinery that's on the other side of this wall. Looks like it's purple. There it is. And you'll notice we got a hard frame engine, and we got no, 34 nanites from that. So we're already getting more nanites from everything, plus the projectiles. What does this give us? So if we go over here, here is your salvage glass. Um, you've also got the quad servos. You've also got pugnium. You've got a hard frame engine. I don't think you get anything for those items that are in your inventory. Let me just double check real quick. I don't quite remember hard frame. Yeah, it doesn't give you anything. I didn't think so. Hard frame is, is good later on. Hang on to it because you're going to need it for upgrades. So hang on to those. At least a few of them. Same thing with the walker brains. Walker brains are very handy to hang on to because they help build and repair the combat uh, scanner in your ship. So you want to hang on to those as well. Just a few of them. You don't need a ton of them like I usually get. Uh, we already know about the pugnium, of course. And I think that's it. Okay. Now we can put the salvage glass in here and it doesn't really do anything, of course. So let's get back into our inventory here. We open this up. Hopefully it'll show something real quick. See, I got a Viking effigy worth money. Okay, so we're getting money out of it. And there you go. It's the Sentinel exosuit fragments you're interested in. As many of those as you can get your hands on. There we go. Another one's appearing over there. And the more you can get of those, the better. So what did we get? We ended up six of them with just that small battle I have. This is where it's 960, and we got another 2,000 here. So between the two of them, we've got, I don't know, close to 3,000 nanites. So that's not bad in a run like this. Plus, you get all kinds of other items that are worth money. You can get yourself some antimatter and other types of things that you could use to build and sell, as the case may be. So that is another way to get yourself some nanites. And it, preferably in my way, it is the preferred method because I have fun killing sentinels, as you all know. Um, I think in this particular one, and you can go into your discoveries. Is it discoveries? No, it's catalog area. You can actually find out how many nanites, uh, pardon me, how many uh, of these guys you've actually taken out over the time. It's interesting to look at this stuff and say, hey, where, where, how far have I gotten in all this? There we go. Destroyed 11,892 sentinels, so about 12,000 sentinels at this point. The funny part is, is that's just on this particular save, and it has nothing to do with all my other saves as well. You know, if all the hours I've spent and all the um, runs I've done, yeah, yeah, there's that. So... As far as species is concerned, if you start looking around and discovering the different species that are on a planet, let me just show you something real quick. Yeah, there's a one right there. We'll discover him, which I could have swore I've discovered them all on this planet as well. If you go back into your discoveries area, if you can discover all of them, you get a, a 3,000 nanite bonus. And that is a pretty good way of also getting nanites, especially early game. Your starter planet will have a limited num number of fauna on it, and you can discover them all to get a nice big boost to your nanites. So there is yet another way you can get nanites. So that, folks, is all the ways I can think of of showing you on how to get nanites in No Man's Sky. Um, there's so many different things you can do and find along the way to get nanites, but that is pretty much the most uh, recommended ways to do so. So, this should do it. I want to thank you all for watching, and I appreciate uh, any comments or questions you might have. And if you all have ideas out there, especially some of you guys have been out there doing this game for as long as I have or longer, uh, or even shorter times, you guys may have discovered things that I haven't discovered yet. By all means, please let us know of your secrets. And if you have questions, again, leave them in the comments section, and I'll go ahead and answer those. Folks, take care. Thank you very much, and we will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye for now. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Take care, everybody.